Hi, I'm Don Thomas, one of the Space Shuttle astronauts. And during my 20-year career from NASA, I had the opportunity, the amazing opportunity, to fly on four different Space Shuttle missions. I flew three times on Space Shuttle Columbia and once on Space Shuttle Discovery. And out of the 135 uh, missions of the Space Shuttle program, I have to tell you the most unusual and maybe the most exciting moment was during the STS-70 mission aboard Space Shuttle Discovery. And this story happened back in July, June and July of 1995. We were just one week from launch and ready to get it going to quarantine that evening, you know, one week before the mission. And our mission objective was to deploy one of the big tracking and data relay satellites from the space shuttle. And we had one final day of training before we would go into quarantine that evening. So we were going through training. I had an early morning session. We finished up about 10 in the morning and I was just leaving the simulator and one of the trainers said to me, hey Don, uh, they're talking about delaying your mission because a woodpecker attacked the space shuttle. And I laughed, I said, yeah, that's, that's funny, um, great joke. He said, no, no, we're serious. And I said, well, how could that be? How could a woodpecker attack the space shuttle? It just sounded so crazy, so outlandish. I thought it, it can't be real, they're just kidding. So I went up to my office there and Tom Hendricks, who was the commander of the STS-70 mission, he was at his desk and I walked in and said, hey Tom, is it true about the woodpeckers? And he said, oh yeah, yeah. And he said, I'm afraid so, uh, a woodpecker attacked the shuttle. And what happened, uh, some lovesick woodpecker, a single northern flicker woodpecker, uh, made an, a, an attack on the space shuttle. It started poking holes in the foam insulation of the external tank. And the foam on the tank is two, three inches thick. And a woodpecker likes to make a nest, you know, maybe eight or 10 inches you know, deep to get in there to build a full nest. And this woodpecker would start pecking the foam. It would hit the aluminum tank underneath and then hit that a few times and say, well, that's too hard. And move over a few inches and, and make another hole there. So this one single woodpecker ended up making 205 holes in the foam of the insulation of the external tank there. I always wondered, you know, why nobody noticed this any, any earlier. You know, this woodpecker made 205 holes and as many of you know, you know, NASA's got all, all these cameras around the space shuttle in preparation for the mission. And why didn't somebody say after say 25 holes or 50 holes or 75 holes, hey, there's a woodpecker making holes there. But nobody ever said anything and this woodpecker made 205 holes and ended up in the, in the external tank. NASA tried to patch up the holes right on the uh, launch pad. It was on pad 39B. And they tried, they had uh, people in big buckets lowering them down. We had uh, scaffolding that they would set up to see if they could access all these holes. They tried and tried, but after about a week, they, they finally said, we, we can't patch these safely here. And they made the decision to roll Space Shuttle Discovery back to the VAB. And they were there for about a week or so, maybe 10 days, and patched up all holes, all the holes all 205 of them, uh, and then they rolled it back out to the launch pad uh, for a second launch attempt. And everything was fine, except NASA still had this huge problem. Well, what do you do with the woodpeckers? How do we prevent uh, any woodpeckers from coming back and, and you know, doing this again? So as only NASA could do, they formed a special team called the BIRD team. It was the BIRD Investigation Review and Deterrent Team, B-I-R-D. I thought it was a great acronym. And they formed this team to, to figure out what happened, why did the woodpeckers do this, and then equally important, how do you keep woodpeckers from coming back and damaging a shuttle again in the future. So they figured out that this was a lovesick woodpecker, it was kind of mating season, and they thought some of the workers might have disturbed the natural habitat around Pad 39B there that prompted the woodpecker to, to investigate the external tank. So they figured, okay, we won't do that again, but they just to keep woodpeckers away in the future, they had a couple of ideas. And people from around the world sent in their ideas about woodpeckers and how to keep them away. One of the ideas was to put plastic owls all over. So all over the rotating service structure around the shuttle, they had these two foot high plastic owls there. An owl is a predator, the natural enemy of a woodpecker. So the idea was that a woodpecker would see an owl and, and not come anywhere near the shuttle. NASA also put out these big beach ball sized balloons. They were called predator eyes. And it was the size of a beach ball and they would have these large eyes on them, very similar to the eyes of an owl or eyes of a hawk. And again, the idea was that a woodpecker would see those eyes and think, oh, that's a huge predator there. I'm not going anywhere near the shuttle. When they rolled 
Discovery out to the launch pad for our second uh, attempt there, they actually had one of these giant balloons at the very top of the external tank, sitting on top. And I laughed, I was at the rollout, and I just laughed when I saw that balloon up there, and I thought, you know, we've got these diesel engines on the crawler transporter, it's all lit up, there's a lot of noise and commotion here. I didn't think there's any chance that Woodpecker is going to be coming out at midnight to attack the shuttle, and yet NASA was just being cautious, and they had that balloon up on top to keep everybody, to keep any Woodpeckers away from that. Also, once we got to the pad, they uh, it had other plans for keeping the woodpeckers away. They had screeching owl noise and hawk sounds that they would blast around the launch pad. I'm not sure it kept the woodpeckers away, but for a fact, it annoyed all the workers out there preparing Discovery for launch. Everybody complained, evidently, that uh, all that screeching noise was driving them crazy out there. But in the end, there were no more woodpecker attacks. It was the one and only instant instance in the history of the space shuttle program that we ever rolled back the shuttle for a reason other than the weather or some technical problem and it was just the woodpecker attacking the shuttle.